Luciano will be speaking about how uh, uh, adversarial pseudo-healthy synthesis needs uh, pathology factorization. So. Okay, so uh, thank you for introduction. I'm Tian, and uh, today I'm going to present my work. So let's begin. First, we need to know what is pseudo-healthy synthesis. So imagine that I have a medical image of a person who has some disease, and I wonder how this image would, lo would look like if this person is healthy. So in a word, pseudo-hautotensis is a process of transforming pathological images into spe subject-specific images, healthy images. And uh, why do we want to do that? First, we can use it for pathology detection, and uh, we can use it for pathology segmentation by comparing the input images and the pseudo health images, and the resulting difference maps will tell us where the abnormalities are. We can even use it for pathological image registration. So say this example, on the left, we have an image which has some deformations caused by some disease, and it is difficult for us to register an atlas to this image because of the deformation. So what we can do is to generate the pseudo healthy version of this image, and we perform registration on the pseudo healthy images to avoid deformation. So what are the challenges in this task? The first challenge is the lack of pair data. It is difficult to find pairs of healthy disease images of the same subjects. And the, the second challenge is how do we know the pseudo healthy images are really healthy? Because we don't have ground truth. And uh, similarly, how do we know if they belong to the same subject as the input sub, uh, images? This is called the preservation of identity. So evaluation of identity is an easy task in some computer vision task. For example, we can, easily, we can easily tell the top two photos uh, both belong to Jackie Chan, which is my favorite. And uh, <laughs> yeah, but how, but how do we know can we know if the bottom two images are from the same brain or not? It is difficult because as human beings, we are sensitive to brain, but we are not sensitive to brain. Also, we are sensitive to face, but not sensitive to brain. So how do other researchers overcome these challenges? Before deep learning, some researchers use patch dictionary based methods. The idea is to create a healthy atlas from healthy subjects only. And then when given pathological images, they search for the closest patches within this healthy atlas and use the found uh, patches to construct the pseudo healthy images. So it doesn't need pair data. But however, this method is limited to atlas. And since we are using patches from other subjects, the identity may be lost. And another approach is called kernel, based, uh, kernel regression based method, where they train, where they learn a model on healthy pairs of T1 and the fly images, and uh, synthesize the healthy images in fly modality from disease T1 images. So this model is easy to train, but it needs paired T1 and the fly images, and it relies on disease is not, pre, is not obvious in T1 modality. This is, another, this is another work from ETH. So where they do is they train an adversary autoencoder on healthy images only. And uh, then they apply the trained model on pathological images. So the idea behind it is since the, auto, since the autoencoder only say uh, healthy images during training, it only does the distribution of healthy images. So when given some pathological uh, this trained model doesn't know how to reconstruct the pathology. Instead, it creates some stuff within the healthy distribution. So there, there is no loss to guaranteeing that disease will be removed, and uh, there is no loss to guaranteeing identity will be preserved. Uh, this is another work from the same group in ETH. So they propose an image to residual conditional GAN where what they do is they first generate a residual image from a, a pathological image, and they add this residual to the input to get a pseudo house images. They also have a discriminator to tell apart from fake and the real data uh, to train the network. However, they only preserve identity by a regularization loss on the residual map, which might not be enough in reality. 
So let's brainstorm a little bit here. So since they go from pathological to healthy, so how about we go from healthy back to pathology to complete a cycle as a way of preserving identity? That is exactly the idea of cycle GAN. So we can say in the figure, what cycle GAN does is it first transfer a data in X domain to Y domain and then go back to Y domain. So by doing this, cycle GAN can have a cycle consistent loss, which is helpful to preserve identity. So cycle GAN doesn't need pair data and it's widely used in medical image applications. So say some example. So reference 11 is a work by my colleague where, where he transfer brain images from one modality to another. For example, from T1 to T2. And the uh, reference 12 is another work to transfer images between pathological and healthy, which is quite related to our task. However, when we use cyclogan, we need to be really careful because in some cases, we may, we may have the problem called the one to one many problem. So say this example, um, what CycleGAN does is first transfer a photograph, a satellite photograph of some place to a map and then go back to the photograph. The problem is how does CycleGAN reconstruct photograph from map when map contains less information than photograph? So we can take a detailed look at the photograph. We can see the white stuff at the bottom. I think it's a roof and we can see some air conditioners on the roof and these air conditioners are not present in the generated map. So how is that possible cycle can reconstruct photo from this map? So this is what we get when we amplify the details of the generated map. We can observe some strange patterns. And uh, uh, in, in these patterns, cycle can hide the information of photograph such that it can reconstruct photo. So we say cycle guy hides or invents information when one modality has less information than the other. And this is an uh, a final example when we apply cyclogan and pseudo health synthesis. So we can see within the red box, there is some pathology. However, this pathology has been changed uh, in the reconstructed image. This is because in this case, cyclogan totally lost the information of the pathology when it performs pseudo health images. So when it tries to try reconstruct the input from the pseudo health images, it doesn't know where and how to add the pathology. So how to solve this problem? In our method, we solve this problem by preserving, preserving information of a pathology with disentanglement. So let's take a look at disentanglement. So as we can see in the right two figures, where we disentangle the information of types of clothes or type, type of digits from uh, other attributes, for example, size, rotation, or brightness. And uh, for medical images, this is another work from my colleague where he disentangled um, modality information and anatomical information. So our proposed method takes the same idea where we treat pathology and the anatomical information as two factors with three components. The first is a generator to synthesize pseudo house images and uh, followed, followed by a segmenter to localize the pathology and then a re and then a reconstructor to reconstruct the input from the pseudo house images and the mask as a way to preserve identity. So within our method, we have two training cycles. The first cycle is called cycle P2H, where we start from a pathological image and we get a pseudo house one and the mask. And then we reconstruct the input using the two products uh, in the middle. And the cycle H to H is mainly designed to preserve identity. So where we start from a healthy image and a black mask, which is a healthy mask, and we get a fake healthy image. And from this fake healthy image, we reconstruct our input image and mask. So let's take a detailed look at cycle P to H. So here we start from a pathological to pseudo healthy and the mask, and then we reconstruct from this pseudo healthy and the mask. And these are the losses in cycle P to H. So we have LCC, which is the reconstruction loss between the input image and the reconstructed image. And we also have LGAN1, which is the image adversary loss to make sure the pseudo house, image, pseudo house images look healthy and realistic. We also have uh, two mask losses, which I will talk about later. So in cycle GAN, we 
as I mentioned, cycle gang is helpful to preserve identity. And uh, so we start from a healthy image and a black mask. We get a fake healthy one. And then from this fake healthy one, we reconstruct. And uh, we, similarly, we have LCC, which in this case are the image and the mask reconstruction losses between the input and, out, uh, and the reconstructed output. And we also have LGAN1 to make sure the fake healthy images look healthy and realistic. We also have two training settings in our method. If for, the first is called paired setting, where we have paired pathological images and the pathology mask. And uh, the other is called unpaired setting, where we don't have such pairs, but we do have segmentations from other subjects, some random segmentations. So in pair setting, uh, we just use the ground truth mask to train the segmenter and it, with a dice loss. Uh, it's easy. And in an pair setting, uh, since we don't have ground truth, what we do is we involve a mask discri discriminator uh, called DM in this case. And uh, we use this ma mask discriminator to tell apart from real pathology mask and uh, the and the segmented mask by our segmenter S. So the idea is, since the output of uh, the output from the segmenter needs to be correct and uh, contains the information of a pathology to enable the reconstructor to reconstruct the input. So the information needs to be correct. However, without this discriminator, this information can be stored in any forms. For example, it can be installed in some, uh, let's say, random patterns, like some string patterns, like we just saw. Uh, but as long as it contains the information, it's OK. But with this discriminator, we force this, in, uh, this information of pathology to be stored in the form of a binary mask, which is a segmentation. So let's take a look at the results. So in this work, we use flat images from Eslers and the Bratz, and we compare with two baselines, uh, a conditional GAN conditioned an input image and a cycle GAN. So another key contribution of our work is that we propose two uh, numeric evaluation metrics to quantitatively evaluate the quality of pseudo-house synthesis, pseudo-house images. So the first is called healthiness. So where we want to measure how healthy our pseudo house images are. And what we do is we pre-train a judge. We call it f pre, uh, which is a pathology segmenter. And we train it, we pre-train it on the pathological images and the ground truth masks. And then we apply the pre-trained model on our pseudo house images. And we check the resulting segmented mask. So uh, take, for example, if, the, if in the ground truth uh, pathology mask, there are, ten, there are 200 pixels labeled as disease, and in the resulting segmented mask from the sort healthy one, we have zero pixels labeled as a pathology. In this case, healthiness is one, which is the best. And uh, in, a, uh, in another example, uh, if the resulting mask from the sort healthy image uh, has 150 pixels labeled as disease, then healthiness is 0 0.25 in this case. So it's not good. Another metric is identity, where we want to measure uh, how, how well the pseudo house images preserve the subject identity. So what we do is we measure the masked structure similarity between the health images and the input image. Uh, outside, the, outside the pathological ranging. And we can know where the pathological ranging are uh, because we have the ground truth pathology mask. Let's see some example results. So uh, pay, pay attention to the right box. In the original image, we can see some pathology. And uh, in cyclogan, we can see some strange patterns are uh, exist. And this is a signal of cyclogan tries to hide some information. And in our proposed method, we don't have that pattern. And uh, now let's take a look at the central part. So we can s observe some details in the original images. And uh, we can say these details are lost in the conditional gain. But our method pres pre preserves these details. This, this is a signal that conditional gain lost the, the information of identity and the details. Uh, 
these are more dynamic in uh, results, and uh, we can see the results from conditional GAN are blurry, and uh, the results from cycle GAN contains, st still contains the uh, information of pathology, and our method doesn't have both uh, drawbacks. So we conclude that space nice produce blurry results, and uh, there are changes of that revenue for base nice, which is a signal of loss of identity, and we can observe a pathology in some baseline results. So these are the numeric results uh, using our proposed matrix. So we can, we can see our proposed method trained in pet setting achieve the best, followed by our, by our proposed method trained in pet setting, both outperform base nice. And uh, so in summary, we, pro we propose a pseudo healthy synthesis method for 2D studies with pathology factorization and uh, adversary learning. And we also propose numeric matrix to evaluate the quality of pseudo healthy images. And we demonstrate that our method outperform conditional GAN and the cycle GAN. So thank you. Okay, so we have uh, some time for questions. Hello, over here. Yeah, first of all, um, it's great that you can virtually hear the patients. I wish we could all put that in clinical practice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm close to the mic already. Maybe someone could put it up a bit. So, yeah, first of all, congrats that, that you can um, virtually hear the patients. Uh, and I wish uh, we could all put that into clinical practice as well. Um, what I uh, wondered when I was looking at your um, r results later on that, that you show is when, when you put um, a yeah, like brain with a lesion in there and make the pseudo uh, healthy version out of that. And then um, if you would put it um, again and again, into you, into you again. Uh, did, did you tr uh, try um, what happened then? Does it converge? Does it diverge? Uh, what happens to, um, yeah, like putting your pseudo healthy uh, versions again into um, your uh, technique? Yeah, we did try that. So when we, up, when we use the pseudo healthy images to the input of the, uh, you know, the pseudo healthy network, let's call it, the, we, we observe like the, uh, it still outputs the pseudo healthy images and the uh, the pathology mask segmented by the segmenter uh, is total is almost black in that case. So, yeah. So, so we we, we think our method is uh, so with uh, when we when we use loop our methods like once the so how to say once the uh, pathology is removed from our uh, pathological images the pseudo healthy images are okay. Okay. So. Okay. Thanks. Other questions? Yeah, over here, just there. Hi, uh, very, uh, very nice talk, thank you. Um, I was wondering whether the, uh, the technique you used to, um, the, using the segmenter to, to avoid uh, hiding information into, in, in the image-based path, whether that's uh, depending a lot of the weight you put onto, onto this term and whether it's still not somehow possible to, to hide this information even, even with your segmenter path and uh, kind of the second part, whether you considered using the judge uh, network you, you used to evaluate, whether you, you considered using that to train your method as well. Uh, so uh, so you are, are you asking that uh, if it's possible that I use a judge to choose the uh, training weights for the segmenter and the generator? Is that your question? Uh, or or even, even just not use the segmenter, but the judge would probably be exactly what you want to uh, avoid any, any hidden information, right? We, so, sorry, I didn't catch the question. Could you maybe s uh, repeat it again? Like, uh, I mean, oh, maybe the question is more, is it possible that there's still hidden information in the image path? In the image path. Uh, so you are saying if it's possible that I, I hide the information or pathology in the pseudo healthy images. Is that, that's what, we wish, why, why, that's what we want to avoid. We don't want our uh, pseudo house images to contain the, you know, some strange patterns or hide the information or pathology. We want to separate them. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. 
this way, just, it, just in the middle of the... Thank you for it. Uh, so in the, uh, I'm, my question is along the same lines as my colleague in the sense that in the theory of disentanglement, when you're in the latent space and you want to make sure that your factors are disentangled or independent from one another, you kind of enforce it, for example, in a variational autoencoder, factor of VAE, or all these families of those ones. So now the question is, now that you have kind of uh, separately encoded the segmentation and yep. the image, how do you enforce that the healthy image does not include any part of the segmentation? We understand that the segmentation is being provided separately to your generator now, but it is, is, was this enough guarantee that your healthy image does not contain anything related to the segmentation? So I think we do it in two ways. First, uh, we use a discriminator to make sure the healthy images are healthy. And uh, if you remember, we have a cycle called cycle H2H, uh, which, uh, which is designed for preservation of identity, also to prevent our network to invent or hide stuff. So we do that by cycle, maybe, yeah, we can talk about later. Definitely, thanks a lot. Okay. I think we had one in the center. I think for the PRETS data set especially, the tumors can lead to deformations in the brain besides uh, the segmented tumor. In these cases, how does your model handle that? Uh, so, sorry, could you repeat like I... Okay, I think tumors can lead to deformations in the brain besides... Uh, yeah. Okay, so to, to answer your question, so if you notice, we design our model as an uh, image-to-image fashion uh, because there are, some, there are some other related work which use a residual or they, they, they just, they just uh, have uh, some additive maps to do the pseudo housing synthesis. But we think if we use additive maps, we treat the disease as additive factors. And uh, we want to avoid it because as you just said, tumor can cause deformation of the brain. So, Actually, we, we expect that, that our network can fix the deformation, but they didn't. And we, I think we know why, uh, we know why now, because we are using the healthy slices, uh, which does, sorry, not, we are using slices, uh, which doesn't have, which don't have a pathological mask in the brass and the esters, uh, that said, so these healthy slices are not actually healthy. So we are working on to we are working on using a to, uh, another totally healthy data set as our healthy images, and we hope uh, we can solve this problem. And okay, I hope. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Sorry, microphone's back on. Uh, I think we've used up our time, and this is a, a last quick question. Um, okay, uh, perhaps we could thank Jan again for a very nice talk. Okay, thank you.